All right, guys. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome to Rifle Roast 3. We're going to get into Rex Engelbert, the guy who gender neutralized that target a few days ago in Nashville. We're going to be going over his rifle. But before we get into that, though, guys, I want to thank you guys for helping me get this channel to 1,000 subscribers. My New Year's resolution was that by the end of the year, I'd be at 1,000 subs. It's April, and we've already hit it. So, Thank you guys so, so much. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure this content is entertaining. It's quality. I want you guys to watch it. I want you guys to enjoy it. If you want to monetarily support the channel, I'm, I'm only bringing this up because a lot of people have asked me. I uh, actually started making some stickers. I think they're really cool. I feel really weird about you guys just straight up donating to me. Something feels wrong about that. I want you guys to have something in return. So if you want to support the channel, uh, in the link in the description, there's going to be a website, Civilian Expedition Outfitters. There's going to be uh, two or three sticker designs on there. Just go ahead and pick one and buy it. You know, I want you guys to have something if you're going to give money to someone. I don't know. It's just a weird thing I have. So thank you guys so much for the support. Now let's go ahead and get into it. Okay. Rex Engelbert is the American hero who gender neutralized that target in Nashville. That's the last time I'll use that joke. I promise. Now we're going to break down his rifle. Now this, the conversation about this rifle on the internet and in my, uh, in my communities has been centered around his optics setup. It's been highly, highly controversial. Yes, it was very effective, but I think Rex Engelbert demonstrated why I don't like LPVOs. So let's go ahead and get into gun. Okay, he's got a BCM Recce 16, which is like the most generic NPC AR. He's a police officer, so he gets a pass, right? That's totally fine, guys. If you're looking for a dependable, good rifle that's high quality, uh, you can get a BCM Recce 16. It's about as generic as it gets. It's really good weight, really good reliability, typically really good QC, although BCM's had some weird issues lately. I'm sure this is just fine. He's got a few other upgrades. He's got the Radiant Talon Safety. Obviously, he's using a PMAG. Uh, thank, thank you to, um, let me bring up his name, Sweet Sample 8622 on Reddit, okay? I uh, very rarely ever go on Reddit, but he was able to compile um, Rex Engelbert's build on, on, on the website, so I really appreciate that. It makes things a little easier. Um, now, let's go over the optic, okay? This is the big conversation. What do we got? Razor HD Gen 2 126. If I was going to get an LPVO, it would be a Vortex LPVO, and this is far and away the best one. Okay, it's relatively light, but it's got that tannadizing, which is beautiful. It's got a really good reticle. It's got a, basically a daylight bright center. Um, so that is a really, really good choice for an LPVO. Now, why do you have an LPVO on a gun? Okay. It's because you want the most, you want a scope that can handle an extremely wide variety of situations that you would be in with a 5.56 rifle. That's why you get an LPVO. Is the target at 500 yards? Is it at five yards? Well, I'm going to get an LPVO because I don't know, right? So for a GPR, for a police officer, this, this makes a lot of sense. Now it's going to be relatively heavy. That's the trade-off. You're going to have a relatively heavy optic. And again, you know, there's always that one guy, oh, well, if you complain about weight on a gun, so you need to work out. It's like, yes, all of us need to work out and be physically fit. But I promise you, if you go hike up straight up a mountain with an AR-15, you're going to hate LPVOs. You're going to you're gonna want an ACOG. You're going to want a prism sight. You're going to want an 8.2, okay? Now, the LPVO, I think, is a really good choice. It's in a Scalar Works mount, which I think this mount is anywhere between three and 400 bucks, okay? Um, so, listen, if it's a tax write-off as a cop, I mean, sure, go for it. I don't know if I'd ever spend the money on that. Because in my opinion, an LPVO is an optic you get if it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know what I want on my gun, you know? I don't know if I want a red dot magnifier. I don't know if I want an ACOG. I don't know what I want, so I'm going to get an LPVO so my bases are covered, Okay. So, and in that case, it should be relatively affordable in my opinion, which is ironic because good LPVOs are very expensive. But anyway, we'll get more into LPVOs later. When he shot the shooter, he wasn't using the Razor. He was not using the 1X on the Razor. He was using in a, uns it's not seen here, but on the other side of this, there is an Aimpoint Acro P2. It's a pistol red dot sight, and it's in a Scalar Works Kick offset mount, okay? So when he shot the shooter, he did not use the 1X on the LPVO. He was using a red dot sight, okay? And I think that this really speaks to the issue with LPVOs, and this is something I have personal experience with. The 1X on LPVOs is usable. It's not great. And if you're going to, like, 
<laughs> if you want a good 1X option on an LPVO, you see all these guys with LPVOs, they all want offset red dot sights anyway, right? What does that tell you? It tells you that from magnifications one to like three on an LPVO, no one really wants to use it, right? People want the four, five, six X. They don't want the one, two, three X, okay? Because they'd rather have a red dot. So here's what I'm putting forward to you. If you are basically going to make the first, you know, three magnifications on your optic obsolete by putting a red dot on there, maybe you have the wrong scope. Maybe you should get an ACOG. Maybe you should get the Vortex Spitfire, one of the primary arms prism sights. Because if you get a prism sight, you're still going to have that decent magnification, 4X, 5X. You're going to still have that mid-range magnification, but you get the freedom of attaching whatever red dot you want onto the gun without compromising the weight of the gun. Now, I'm nitpicking a little bit because clearly this optic setup works really, really well for Mr. Rex. I, I hope he keeps he keeps using that optic setup. He clearly knows how to, how to use it well. It's just the whole LPVO conversation to me is very, very confusing. Um, there's a YouTuber named Nurse Dude. He has a sick rifle setup. I think we talked. we're going to talk about it later in this episode. Um, I would love to hear his opinions on that. Uh, hopefully he sounds off in the comments. But anyway, that's basically everything interesting about Rex Engelbert's rifle. Again, American hero. If you guys cloned his setup, I mean, not a bad choice. Don't get me wrong. It's just the whole LPVO thing is very confusing. Let's go ahead and move on to the next gun. Okay, so this is really fun. So this is a retro rifle build. Now, it's got a... It's got the right P mag, but it's the right P mag in the wrong gun. Okay, if you're going to get a retro rifle, go all the way. What what are these? These are terrible. <laughs> That's either the BCM or B5 grip. Um, I get those two mixed up a lot. And then you got a mag pull P mag. I mean, this, this is wrong. Okay, just if you're going to do this, do it right. Get the right grip. Get the right P mag. <laughs> or get not P mag. I get a steel mag. I don't know what, what that's about. So right out the gate, <laughs> those are big problems. Other than that, though, this is a really, really fun build. Okay, so it's a dissipator build. It's got, look at that. Look at that upper receiver. Oh, frick. PSA bought that company that makes those. Oh, I forgot the name of the company. Really, really cool, though, because you get the built-in carry handle. It's, it, this is a really nice rifle. This is a really nice build. Can you imagine, Kay? You're, you're deep in, I don't know, the Sawtooth Mountains or something. I don't know. You're just, you're, or the Uinas. Okay, and you got your campfire, you got your mountain house. Maybe you brought like an old radio or something. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Just imagine the vibe of just sitting by a campfire with this gun. Isn't that just freaking pleasant? Now, this optic on here, okay, this is a Trigicon. I forget what it's called. Hoplophile just reviewed it. Uh, it's a very interesting optic. Definitely not my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth choice for a 1X optic on a gun. So there's a few problems with it. One is that it's a 4OM, 4MOA dot. Two is that it uses ambient light to create the dot. Now, at first, if you're a prepper like me, you're always worried about EMPs or logistics supply chains collapsing. That that At first, that sounds really, really appealing, right? Because it's like, oh my gosh, a red dot site that doesn't need electricity to function? Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. It introduces some new problems. So one is that it's really only going to function well if what you're shooting at is in the same lighting conditions as you. If you're in a building shooting out, or if you're out shooting into a building, which in America, around the world, that is a very, very common type of combat situation. If you're in that situation, this dot is not going to be helping you. You're going to want to be using your irons. And if you're going to be using your irons anyway, why even have the reflex sight, right? Um, it's also really far forward. It looks really heavy. I mean, that's a really awkward place to put a 1X sight. So um, obviously, this was the move probably for a while. Um, but honestly, nowadays, I don't. You should really only be doing it for you know for fun or to flex on people. Uh, but overall, I mean, this rifle's fun. Dissipator rifles are fun. They have weird dwell time issues. I don't know if you really care about that if you're if you're building one of these in the first place. This is a very very fun gun. I would love to shoot it. This isn't. I, I hope whoever's gun this is. I hope they have like two or three other AR-15s that are a little more normal. Uh, this is definitely not the bright gun um, nowadays to build, obviously, but. I mean, as sort of a historical piece, this is very, very, very fun. So, um, yeah, if you're going to build a retro AR, I mean, there's a few benefits to retro ARs. One is I would rather you collect retro ARs than other types of guns. Okay, because if you get, like, say, an old Kentucky long rifle, which, don't get me wrong, I'd love to own one. 
that gun's really not going to be useful for anything after the world ends. I mean, maybe there's some advantage to the fact that it's a muzzle loader and yeah, you can shoot deer and elk or whatever. Uh, but if you're going to collect retro guns, I mean, this is a rifle you really could give someone. And if you guys need to go do something, I mean, Hey, I mean, there's way worse choices than this gun. It's just, I just don't like the optic, but I mean, I don't know. I like it a lot. Don't get me wrong. I just hope whoever has it, I hope they have a more practical weapon. Obviously, this doesn't have a light. I'd get a vintage light. You know, I think that'd be fun as well. So overall, definitely not a bad gun. Just uh, make sure you got your other rifles squared away. Let's move on to the next one. I don't think I don't think I'm allowed to reveal whose rifle this is. However, I love this gun, although it's got some weirdness going on. So again, I get the BCM and um, B5 grip mixed up all the time. This is one of those. Um, not my favorite. I love the Magpul K2 grip. I wish Magpul would pay me. Uh, Magpul, I, you know, I'm at a thousand subs now, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, please, I will shill every single one of your products. I'll even shill the bad lever. Okay, I don't even care. Now, here's the deal. He's also got the Magpul CTR stock. This is a very NPC stock, but I have one. I love it. It works really, really well. So good choice there. This optic setup is better than you could possibly think, okay? If, now, you might be looking at that Holosun 403C. I think, it, no, 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 what, that's not what it is. Is that what it is? 403, is, no, am I an idiot? I don't, I don't remember. This is the Holosun RMR optic, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, if he has an ACOG, why doesn't he have an RMR? Everyone knows that the Holosun pistol sights are way better than RMRs. RMRs have so many weird problems that make them completely unattractive to me that the Holosun fixes, okay? So my dream optic setup on, my, on like a 16-inch gun is probably this. This is really, really good. The ACOG's a lot heavier than my Vortex Spitfire. However, it, it's also going to be very, very durable. Um, I don't really care that it's a 4X instead of a 5X. I think this, this is a really, really, really good choice. So I love that optic setup so much. Let's keep going forward here. Trigger, it's mil spec. Uh, great, nothing wrong with that. I don't know a whole lot about lights and lasers. Um, that looks like a hollow sun unit, if I'm not mistaken there. The LS321, uh, something like that. I think that's what it is. Or the LE321, one of those. Um, that's probably what I would get. It's relatively cheap, relatively affordable. Um, and that's what we're all looking for right now. I do not like Enforce lights. I have not had the best experience with Enforce lights, uh, but that's that's just me. Um, you know, I just they don't seem that bright. I mean, especially for the money, I'd rather get a stream light. Uh, but you know, whatever. If it works for him, it works for him. Now, here's what's weird. So notice, there's no rear. There's no rear sight. Okay, there's no rear backup iron sight. This ACOG's not on a quick detach mount. Okay, he's got this sick A2. Uh, flip like I don't even know what to call this this is a flip like oh, I'm jumbling up my words trying to describe what this is this is a front sight base that folds down so it kind of behaves like a mag pull backup iron sight but it's attached to your gas block it's like a $200 part it's made by the ARMS arms company I think is what it is it's really cool it's a $200 part it's really expensive and so I don't know why this is on here because there's no backup iron sight to go with it. I mean, unless it's somehow, I'm not an ACOG expert. Are you able to use this with the ACOG somehow? Like what? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I just don't know why that's on there. I mean, it's really just tripping me up. I mean, it's, it's just really, just really doesn't make sense to me. I mean, listen, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. Like, I think that I'm jealous. Okay. I want that. I want that gas block. But why is it on here? If there's no backup iron sight, am I making any sense? Anyway, let's keep going here. Also, the whole rifle needs a paint job. Um, angled foregrip, I've talked about that before. Not my favorite thing, but it's all personal preference. Now, notice something, okay? He's got a blue force sling, which, by the way, very good. Look at this. He took the sling off the gun, but he couldn't hide from us. We know he's left-handed. That light is mounted where, you, you, where your thumb would be if you're using your right hand up here. You'd have to use your left hand back here. Whoever owns this rifle, they're left-handed. You, They thought they could hide it. They thought they could hide that their mom was left-handed. Well, guess what, punk? Your mom, your mom's going into the fire. I mean, your mom's not left-handed. Your mom's a witch. That's why you're left-handed. Now your mom has to go into the fire. Overall, though, I really, really do love this rifle. 
Um, it just needs a little bit. I, I want to sit down with whoever's rifle this is and just ask them a few questions about their about this, about that, about that, and about why they're left-handed. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next gun. This is Nurse Dude's rifle. And again, I, I really want to sit down with him and talk about LPVOs and red dot setups. I think I've wasted enough of our time about that. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'd love to talk to him more about that. Now, actually, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. So he's got a red dot up here. Okay, so his makes a little more sense because I'm pretty sure he would say that's because he wants to be able to use it with night vision. Okay, because when you're using NV, you usually want your red dot a little bit higher. Okay, that's better than Rex Engelbert's setup. However, you still have the problem where you're using an LPVO that has a 1X anyway. And we all know, listen, if you're going for a 1X magnification shot, no one wants to use an LPVO 1X. Everyone wants to use a Red Dot 1X. Anyway, I've wasted enough time with that. So let's not, let's not talk about the optics setup because I've wasted enough time talking about that. I really love this stock setup. I think this is the Magpul. Ooh, I think it's got storage in there. I forget the all the model names, but this is basically a Magpul SL stock with storage and a QD mount. So really, really, really cool. I really like that stock. I mean, it's a way of having a Magpul stock that's not the CTR stock, which I can I can respect. Again, B, uh, I forget which one it is, B5 or BCM. He's got one of those grips. Again, not my favorite, but whatever. Magpul P Mag 20. I am almost always, whenever you watch my armed expeditions, I'm almost always running a Magpul PMAG-20. If you're going into a low threat environment, but you still want an AR, uh, I think that I think that's a great choice. I mean, it's, it also helps when going prone. Um, it also helps with weight a little bit. I mean, it's an aesthetic choice more than anything. You're not really totally gimping the effectiveness of your gun. And I, like, look at how clean this gun is, by the way. Look at how beautiful this rifle is. This is a very good-looking gun. I mean, just very, very good. I still think you should spray paint it. But, I mean, <laughs> it looks really, really good. I don't know that much about rails, but this rail is interesting. It's got the... Uh, it's got rails at every clock position, which is very, very cool. Um, instead of just 12, 6, frick, what is it? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so dumb. 12, 3, 6, and 9, it's got rails in between all of those as well, which is very, very nice. you got a very advanced laser and light setup up here. Very, very bougie. I hope he does well for himself. I don't know what he does for work, but good for him. Uh, maybe he bought a, oh, what was that crypto that made everyone rich a few years ago? I guess there was a lot of them. Anyway, hopefully <laughs> hopefully he trades his crypto well, because that looks like a very, very expensive light and laser setup. Can't really tell what it is from this angle, but good for him. Okay, what's up with this muzzle device? This muzzle device is, looks really weird because the barrel, like the mud, like, let me restart that. The hand guard starts here and the freaking muzzle ends way out here. Maybe it's just a weird trick of the camera or something, but it's just, it's an unreasonably long muzzle device. So that means one of two things. One, he doesn't have an A2 birdcage, which is a sin. Or two, he can attach a suppressor, which is totally excusable. I mean, if your muzzle device attaches a suppressor, I mean, it kind of gives you free reign to use whatever muzzle device you want, in my opinion. So hopefully that's a suppressor mount compatible <laughs> muzzle device, because otherwise that's a, that's a really bad muzzle device choice. But otherwise, I, I mean, I love this gun. He's got a sling. I mean, all he really needs to do is explain to me in the Schizo St. Court why he's got this optic set up and uh, why he doesn't have a paint job. But other than that, I really, really, really love this gun. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Oh, real quick. Uh, that is either a Geisley or Radian charging handle. I think I see the G up there, unless I'm making it up in my head. I can't really tell. That, either way, really nice charging handle as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Hey. All right, gentlemen, last gun of the day. So what on earth is this monstrosity? So this is one of two things. Now, I, I, need, to, I need to check. I, this is either a, a freaking, um, oh, I forget the, the, the model names. This is basically an HK MP5 in 308. Okay, look at that barrel. How long could this barrel possibly be? Let's be generous and say seven inches, even though there's no way this is seven inches. Let's, let's be generous and say this is a seven inch barrel and an MP5 form factor, okay, in 308. 
This gun is so enormously ineffective, I can't even begin to describe how stupid this gun is, okay? A lot of issues. Look at that tiny stock, okay? It's not going to be comfortable shooting this gun, okay? When you've got a 308 projectile leaving this barrel, okay? And you've got a bunch of flash, okay? You've probably got flash going like 10 feet up in the air, okay? And like 10 feet out from the muzzle, you're going to have flash. So <laughs> you have all that energy. And then this tiny little stock <laughs> is all that stands in between you and what essentially boils down to a flashbang, okay? And I'm pretty sure this is this is this has to be a 40 to 50 round drum, okay? So you've got 40 to 50 rounds of 308, tiny stock, 7-inch barrel. <laughs> this gun is a freaking laugh riot. Oh my gosh, I'd give anything to shoot this gun. Now, Guns like this, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, if you ever see a weird configuration like this, a lot of it is just due to logistics, okay? Um, you have to understand, NATO standardized on 762 by 51 And so if your country's sitting on a lot of 762 by 51 a lot of 308 and you need a freaking PDW, I mean, you might as well chamber it in a round you got billions of, right? Um, now, it's not like 9 millimeters super hard to come by, so why they didn't just have MP5s I don't know, because here's the reality. The difference between 308 out of a 7-inch barrel and 300 blackout out of a 7-inch barrel, it's basically negligible. The difference is, is that your 308 cartridge is going to have a lot of unburnt powder. <laughs> so you're totally wasting powder. Um, I don't know, man. This is such a goofy gun. I, I hope no one ever seriously uses one of these to defend their own life. I mean, I'm sure it's been done. I'm sure there are a few little skirmishes in the Cold War that involved this gun. But... Um, or this type of gun, I should say. <laughs> Can't say I, I, I want to be part of any of that. So uh, this is a, such a goofy freaking... Oh, man. I love it, though. I really do love it. I really do want to shoot it. I'm curious how accurate it is. I'm, I want to know more about this gun. I want to know more about the twist rate. I didn't do a lot of research into this. This was just kind of submitted to me. Um, so I, I need to do more research. I don't know my H&Ks very well. But... um. Overall, guys, I hope none of you ever clone this gun for any serious <laughs> purpose. But, but if you do, hey, whatever, uh, invite me over. I want to shoot it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, we're going to end this episode with a goodie. Look at this. So this is a Draco, okay? I'm like 99% sure this is the, the Draco made by Century Arms. Now, for the one of you that doesn't know what a Draco is... It's basically just a pistol configuration AK. That's all it is. Now, before I fell in love with the idea of a 300 blackout gun, which I should have one before the end of the year, if not sooner, I was seriously considering an AK like this. Because think about it. It's a relatively short, compact package that you could easily fit in a backpack. And it's shooting 7.62 by 39. And so you don't need a big barrel. You don't, or excuse me, you don't need a long barrel to get very, very good terminal ballistics. So I was seriously considering getting one of these and putting maybe a brace in the back or something. As you can see here, he has a sl single point sling, which that's a, not a terrible choice for a gun like this. Uh, this gun's got some issues though. Okay, let's start with the grip in the back. Okay, that's, I don't even know. It looks horrible, looks stupid. Okay, done. Let's go to the front. What is that freaking kill dozer muzzle device? <laughs> okay, what are you doing? Plowing snow with your freaking AK? Like, why? Why? What is that? That was the worst thing I've ever seen. Listen, 762 by 39 recoil. I mean, sure, it's more stout than 556, but that muzzle brake is completely, completely unnecessary. <laughs> Holy freaking cow. So what a gun like this is going to do. Again, just like that MP5 and 308 we just saw a little bit ago, this is going to be your portable flashbang, okay? That's all this gun is. This is not a gun. This is a flashbang that can shoot bullets. So, this gun is a 0 out of 10. I would never use this gun <laughs> under any circumstances ever. So, just, just terrible. There's not really much else to say. I mean, it doesn't have a light. It's not painted. I mean, it doesn't have an optic. Um, it's just got iron sights, which, dude, if you own a Draco, you don't freaking aim. I mean, what it, the kind of people, the kind of people 
that own Dracos, they don't aim, you know. <laughs> so anyway, guys, um, I just got a lot of other rifle submissions. So my next rifle row should be coming out pretty soon here. Other than that, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so, so much for watching all the way through. You have no idea how much that means to me. Really helps my self-esteem. No, I'm just kidding. Really helps a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Again, if you want to support the channel, there's a lot of ways of doing it. You can like, you can subscribe, you can leave a comment. All of those things are incredibly helpful. And if you're one of those weirdos that wants to help me monetarily, you are more than welcome to go buy a sticker from Civilian Expedition Outfitters. The link is going to be in the description. Also, if you want to submit a gun to be roasted, there's going to be a link to a Google Drive in the description box. Go ahead and share your gun there. I will happily roast it in the next one. So have a wonderful day, guys. It was so good talking to you again. Take it easy. Bye-bye.